I want to wish you all, uh, first of all, a very happy new year. Uh, I think it's the prayer of many that 2021 will not be the same as uh, 2020. Uh, so we do pray that the Lord will bless us all in the year ahead. 2020 has come to an end uh, just over a week ago now. And uh, recently, I've been thinking back a little on the year that's passed. And uh, it came to mind that 2020 is like a, a microcosm of world history. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. But first of all, I want to turn to the Bible. And uh, I'm going to read in 1 Timothy in the Bible, uh, Paul's first letter to Timothy and uh, chapter 1. And I'm going to read in verse number 15. It says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And it's particularly those words, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners that we want to notice. Now, what was it that I meant when I said that 2020 is like world history in miniature? Well, as I look back on the year, it fell into four chunks, four parts in my mind. And uh, the, the first chunk was the start of the year. Uh, that was the time when here in the West, at least, all seemed to be fairly good. That there may have been rumblings of a problem elsewhere. There was the threat of a, a problem, perhaps, but but here everything was fairly unaffected. Life was normal, and uh, for many, life was fairly good. And then uh, into February and into March time, uh, right through to the middle of the year, that was the time of the virus invasion. That was the time you'll remember of the super spreader. You know, a person who had the virus and uh, traveled about and infected many other people with it. As far as the Western nations really were concerned, that was the time when the virus entered our world and really affected us. Then, as well as that, there was the, the time of the heroes, those health healthcare workers and, and others like them, who, who sacrificed so much to be on the front line serving others. Uh, for a period, we were seeing photographs of healthcare workers and others who had themselves suffered as a result of the work that they were doing. In fact, there were some who died as a result of the virus. And then the year ended really in hope, the hope of a vaccine, the hope of a way out of the mess, the hope of a brighter future beyond COVID-19. Although, as we know, for one reason or another, not everyone wants to take the vaccine. And as well as that, the, the, the problem is still presently raging. Now, as I thought through those things, uh, there were four thoughts really, which could be summarized like this. First of all, there was the beginning. Then there was the problem, and then there was the sacrifice, and then there is presently hope as a result. Now, anybody who knows world history as, as the Bible records it will see what I have in mind. You see, the beginning of this world is recorded in Genesis chapter 1, and we read there, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God brought the universe into existence by his power. And that beginning was perfectly good. Now, I said that the beginning of 2020 was, well, it was comparatively good uh, for the most of us, at least. But the beginning of the world was perfectly good. The Bible states that God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. That was a world without problems. 
In that world, by the way, the environment was perfect. That was what God wanted. And in that world, each human being uh, was equally valuable in the sight of God and treated as such. And in that world, there was no sickness and no disease and no death. And there was no isolation because God saw that it was not a good thing for a man to be alone. And he created a companion for him. And the point really is just this. The world started out well. It couldn't have been better. The world that God made was perfect. But there was the threat of a problem. God made human beings to be special creatures with the ability to make free choices. He gave to human beings something special, something good, this capacity to make choices. They could choose to trust him and love him, or they could choose to distrust him, to disbelieve him, and to turn from him. Now, being able to make choices makes a person responsible for the choices that they make. And this really brings us on to the second point. You see, the problem that entered the world many years ago was sin. According to the Bible, there was one man who sinned at the beginning, and he became the, 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 the super spreader of the problem. It entered our world through his willing rejection of God, through his disobedience. And uh, the Bible says, by one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Sin entered uh, and sin spread and sin brought death into the world. This was the, the mother of every problem. Sometimes people look at the world and they say, why is the world that God made so full of, of pain and, and suffering and sickness and death? Well, the, the, the world that God made at the beginning wasn't full of those things. In fact, we're living in the world that man has made by his free choice to rebel against God. Man's choice has brought God's judgment. So, so the problem is sin. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. But there's something more. Sin isn't uh, just the name for the disease that we all are infected by from Adam. Sin is the name for the wrong decisions that we deliberately each make. And while the sin received from Adam brings death, physical death, our own acts of sin against God bring a far more severe judgment upon us. The Bible calls that hell. And what about the heroes? Well, in the midst of all the worries and, and sorrow last year, the first ray of light was to see people willing to step up and risk their lives for others. And, and so we, we read about many who risked everything and, and some who lost everything, saving the lives of other people. And when it comes to world history, there is one hero that stands apart from everyone else. We've read in the Bible the, the words, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Now he, he came to save us from the, the greatest of problems, from sin and uh, the consequences of our sin. He, he stepped up. He did that by, by stooping down. He came into the world to deal with the problem that we have. Now, now who is this person that we're, we're speaking about? Well, he, he's no less a person than God. See, the Bible reveals that there is one God 
who exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And no less a person than the eternal Son left heaven to rescue us from our sin. And, and here's the thing, he didn't just uh, risk his life to rescue us. And he didn't just lose his life in order to rescue us. The, the Bible tells us that he gave his life to rescue us. He knew the cost before he left heaven, and yet he came. Uh, and we read in the book of Titus in the Bible that our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. A hero is someone willing to sacrifice themselves for others. Well, no one ever offered a sacrifice as the Son of God did. No one ever paid the price that he paid because no one could. He alone was capable of being wounded for our transgressions, of bearing our sins in his own body, of suffering for sins as a righteous person for righteous people so that he might bring us to God. Now, finally, as a result, the, the, there is hope. You know, over the past month or so, maybe more than that now, uh, there, there's, there's come the news that many were waiting for and hoping for, uh, a vaccine. Now, it's not, none of the vaccines suggested are really the ideal solution. Well, for, first of all, because they're not 100% effective. Uh, and second, because a, a vaccine isn't really a cure for people who are already infected. And as well as that, uh, these vaccines, they're, they're quite costly. And that might mean that not everyone gains access to them. But all the same, it's good news. There's, there's hope. Even though COVID-19 is still in the world, there's the possibility of being protected from it and from the, the consequences of getting it. Well, thankfully, there, there's hope in respect of sin. And this is the ideal solution. You see, the solution to sin is 100% effective. The Bible makes it clear that every person who trusts Christ for their salvation will be saved from sin's power and from its penalty. Their lives will be changed. Their destiny will be changed. As well as that, it's a cure intended for those who are already infected, which is just as well, really, because we all are infected. When the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world, he said that he had not come to, to, to save those who are righteous, because there aren't any. He had come to call sinners to repentance, that is to acknowledge their sin, to turn to him and to trust him. And uh, as well as that, this, this, uh, this cure is available to everyone free of charge. The Lord Jesus' death on the cross was the payment that was needed and his resurrection from the dead is the receipt that has been given so that we can be assured that salvation is free to us. So there's offered to you salvation from sin, salvation from its consequences, salvation from hell. You know, it's worth mentioning that for, for one reason or another, uh, some people won't take the, the vaccine for COVID-19. and it, it, This is, and, and it should be, a, a free choice. Each must make up their own mind and bear the consequences of the choice that they make. But when it comes to salvation, uh, that which God has provided to rescue us from sin and from hell, there is also a choice. You can choose to reject Christ 
and his work for you. And there will be certain consequences if you do that. Or you can trust him and there will likewise be certain results. You see, the Bible puts it like this. It says, he that believes on the Son, the person who trusts in the Son of God, has everlasting life. And then it says, and he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. And so we are, I am urging you today to make a wise choice. The Lord Jesus has made salvation available for you. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. So I'd encourage you, turn to the Savior, trust him today, and find this wonderful blessing of a certain and sure salvation. Now, thank you for listening, and I want to encourage you to come back again about the same time next week, and you'll hear another message from God's Word sharing with you the good news of salvation through the Lord Jesus. Thank you.